in the precious name of Jesus Christ Lord again we say a big thank you to you for your spectacular visitations both at the plenary sessions and at the workshops and the experiences you have given each one ever since we came receive our thanks Lord in Jesus precious name can you hear your loudest amen give the Lord a big hand and take your seat Again, I'd like to welcome everyone for this session tonight as we trust God for a definite encounter for each one. May I at this point again appreciate very deeply all our resource persons that handled the workshop sessions during this convention. We are blessed to have their professional and great insight input into our various professions and careers. I'll be doing this more formally tomorrow as we bring them all up for appreciation and recognition. But for now, let's give a big hand to all our workshop facilitators for a job well done. Praise the Lord. And all our keynote speakers have done excellently well. We've had some great time with Pastor Sam Adeyemi. We had some moments with um, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya and our own Bishop David Abioye. Let's give them a big hand for them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Insight is the greatest asset in the journey of life. My people perish for lack of knowledge, not because there is a devil. My people are going into captivity, not because there is a captor, but because they have no knowledge. And by knowledge shall my just one be delivered. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. You shall know, and the knowledge that you possess shall set you free. John chapter 8 and verse 32. So we discover that destiny anchors on knowledge. And those who do know their God, and they shall be strong, and they shall do exploits. So the more you know, the more exploits you command. The more you know, the more authority is conferred on you in your field. The more spiritual insight you gain, the more spiritual command you experience. The more insight, spiritual insight you possess, the more spiritual command you gain. So it's all about knowledge. Knowledge is key to everything. Knowledge is key to everything. I called it yesterday, the currency of destiny that determines your purchasing power in the market of life. Knowledge is everything. Give a man money, he will soon finish it. But give him insight, he has an inheritance. <laughs> he said, he's given us all things that pertains to life and godliness, but they are delivered through the channel of knowledge. It's not of anything. It's not through money. It's through knowledge. Through knowledge. So it's very important for us to continue to place value on knowledge. And for those of us who have taken time to come in here, like I told you yesterday and today, please take time to maximize the opportunities around you. Because exposure 
is a price for exploit. We should take our time to invest into our destiny and not operate by time and chance, time and chance, time and chance. And our various facilitators poured out themselves and the resources in them and the explorations they have made in order to enhance the output of participants after this meeting. The Copelands have not given me a dime in their life. I perceive I've been privileged and we have been privileged to send seeds across to them. But the insight that I gain through them is an inexhaustible resource. If they gave me one million dollars then, I would have finished it. I can't remember what my grandmother gave me in terms of material things. She did a lot anyway. I was a very enviable student boy while in school because I was the only one that had a bicycle in the boarding house. I was very popular. The head boy, if he needs a ride, he must come to me and beg me for a ride. <laughs> and so that I would not be carrying children, other children, and have accidents, so they gave me a lady cycle that has no um, bar on which somebody can see, but I will put somebody on the handle and be riding the bicycle from the side. So I had quite some benefits and pleasures. Uh, but that's not comparable to the nuggets of life that I gained from there. Those who don't sit today should not expect to become masters tomorrow. So sit on your job. Those who are the things that my grandmother was telling me. Never depend on your father's inheritance or you offer yourself over to poverty. Those were the things she was telling me. Your work is what determines your worth, not what people think about you. Those are the things that made me. So insight, there is no comparing it in value. So I want you to please wake up and take full advantage of the things you are grabbing here and commit yourself to the application of the same, and it will make all the difference. In my series, Breaking New Grounds, Part six. In case you have been following, the first one is the power of self image. The second is the cost factor. The third is the root tree principle or the root power. And the fourth is the power of information. And the fifth, which we had this morning, is the power of possibility mentality. Possibility mentality. And tonight we'll be looking at the power of planning. The power of planning. Are you ready? The power of planning. I'd like you to say this with me. Planning is winning. Just as breathing is living. Planning is winning. Just as breathing is living. That's how vital plan is to any man's life and any business endeavor. It is planning that gives value to purpose. Purpose is dead without a plan. It is planning that empowers purpose to deliver. Purpose is impotent without a plan. A 
A, a planless farmer will be a failure because in farming endeavor, you need to plan your planting season. You need to plan the various operations preceding the planting. Otherwise, you don't be doing anything anyhow and you end up frustrated because there is no plan. And Paul said, I have planted, Apollo has watered, and then God brings the increase. So there is the plat, planting plan that is in place. And <laughs> if you want the best from it, you must also expect to engage a watering plan to be sure that in case the rain fails, there is still a way of getting water to your planting so you can get some harvest. Think of it. Every building begins with what? A plan. How many will say amen to that? Amen. You don't need a plan for a shanty. But you do need a plan for any building of any value. Any building that holds any value requires a plan. So the construction of any building begins with a plan. And Hebrews chapter 3 verse 4 he said, every house is built by some man, but he that builds all things is God. <laughs> and you see, people will talk about, we have built this business. So business is a form of building. And that's why, just like every building requires a plan, every business requires what we call business plan. There must be a plan. Hmm. There must be a plan. I've said here in this meeting that um, recently I postulated a theory, a management theory, which stipulates you don't grow big to manage well, you manage well to grow big. So the business that will be big tomorrow will be seen today in the quality of the structural plan that is engaged. It's not tomorrow that you know, it's today you know. We did not just have an executive council in our ministry, we have always had it. When income was 3,000 in a month, there was an executive council. There was an annual report format. There was a procedure for drawing money. You will still find in that little book where I signed for five naira for fuel subsidy. Most businesses today are victims of lack of plan or poor planning. There is no differentiating the capital from the profit. Is everything jumbled together. Say, By the time we grow now, we'll be able to do that now. No problem. You don't need to have an accountant to be accountable. There was no way we could employ an accountant. It would be foolery. In the days when my wife's salary was 140 naira, my own was 300 naira, you can't employ an accountant. But we're still very much accountable to the point that the tax you collect at the toll gates, what they call it, slips or something, toll gate slip of five, 50 kobo, uh -huh. it's part of the thing we attach in our returns. So it's not that uh, we are going to grow big someday and then we are going to start doing it. You need strategic planning to maximize your business endeavors. You need that. All the things we have today you know, foreign emission department, we had it in the powerhouse in 1981-82. We had estate department in the structure. 
there was no plot of land. We had the directorate that represented the executive council, the topmost decision making body. If you are not futuristic in your approach, you can't earn a future. So I'm not just talking about planning, I'm talking about futuristic planning. It is good management, therefore, that guarantees good results. It is good management that guarantees good results. Whatever farm that is not well managed is bound to fail. The quality of the seed, notwithstanding, any farming endeavor that is not properly managed is bound to fail. So good management is key to the fruit yielding capacity of any farm. The quality of management is what determines the quality of results. I hope you will take note of these things and not just have them as one of those things that come by. Therefore, management skill is key to determining the level of results that any organization will ever command. Just like you are aware, life not well managed will be wasted. Time not well managed will be trashed. Money not well managed will be squandered. So everything that is to grow must be well managed. Everything that is to grow must be well managed. I have said time and again, praying without planning is playing without knowing. Praying without planning is playing without knowing. And planning without programming is living in the woods, lost in the wilderness. And programming without pursuit is dining with the dead. That's why we said repeatedly, Exploit is expensive. So from purpose to move into planning, from, from planning you section your plans into time slots and then set, go, the pursuit begins. So it's a power cycle. Purpose, planning, program, pursuit, and then after you have accomplished that, the next purpose, we go through the same process of planning, of programming, of pursuit, and then delivery. And then the next one, until you draw your last breath. Prayer alone, I think, will make you a body to God. It is prayer with planning that makes you a co-laborer with God. Prayer alone will make you a burden to God. Give me, give me. It's every day, give me. But when you engage in planning, with your prayer you become a co-laborer with God. Our anchor text for this subject is Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3 to 5.
Through wisdom is a house built. That is the King James Version. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding it's established. Proverbs 24 verses 3 to 5. And by knowledge shall all thy chambers be filled with all manner of precious and pleasant riches. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding is established. And by knowledge shall all thy chambers be filled with all manner of precious and pleasant riches. However, the Amplifier Bible helps to diagnose and dissect that statement in a more modern way, in a more relevant way. And this is how it reads. Every enterprise is built by wise planning and it becomes strong through common sense and profits wonderfully, extraordinarily by keeping abreast of the facts. Amen. So, <laughs> every, the future of every enterprise is therefore at the mercy of wise planning. And a common sense execution program of the plan. Engaging all available facts. I think that clearly defines the place of planning in our various business endeavors. The reason we have never been indebted as an organization is because we are able to plan with the available resources per time. Life is in phases, I've always believed, and men are in sizes. Our organization never had any musical equipment of our own until 21 years ago, 1986. We are some dangerous horn speakers with Awuja amplifier competing with the cricket. We well, have a nice time. We used to invite some musical groups like Footsteps of Jaws. They bring their equipment and they play and play, and when they finish, they go. Some of them are here now. They, they, they help us to see how music can be, and then they carry it when they finish. I don't have any feeling for it. Because the objective is well defined. I'm sending you not to play equipment. I'm sending you to preach the word of faith, to liberate mankind from all oppressions of the devil. So I won't miss that for anything. Since the microphone won't speak to me, it's me who will speak to it. There's no problem. Every enterprise is built by wise planning. It becomes strong through the use of common sense and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. So that's why we ask you, consult resource materials in your fact hunting crave. From there, you are able to locate facts relevant for your planning process. You need facts. And it profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. So it is the facts at your disposal that determines the quality of your planning process or the quality of the plan at your disposal. When you give your house plan to a draftsman, you should not expect what you will get from an architect. Should you? The first house that my wife and I lived in, there was a room there that has no definition. It was not a store. It was not anything. It was just one room 
in one place that has no light entering it from anywhere. It has no door. Okay, what do we now call this room? No name. It was a draftsman that drew it, I believe. An architect, because of the available facts to him, he knows that he needs to allow natural lighting to every space. Two, he needs to mind ventilation at all costs. Three, he will not be pushed by the client to do unprofessional things. But the draftsman put one room here, one room here, one room here, one room here. He said, no, 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 yes, stop, stop. I said, put one room here, one room here, one room here. So it's your intellectual capacity that determines the quality of your plan. So you need facts. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. So you need insight for your purpose not to be disappointed. You need insight. For your purpose not to be disappointed. Proverbs 15, 22. In my understanding, counsel is knowing the way to go, having clarity and intelligent path towards accomplishing your set goals. This is very important. Only those who sit down to plan today will shine tomorrow. Where there is no planning, purpose is bound to be defeated. Proverbs 19.21 As is commonly said, failing to plan is what? Planning to fail. The goal of any business will remain unattainable without planning. Dreams are bound to be aborted without planning. Therefore, for truth, planning is winning. Planning is the master key to accomplishment. Planning is the secret behind fulfillment of dreams. What then is planning? Are you ready? You know, a number of people run ministries without any knowledge of management principles. So you find the anointing is wasted because. There is no way to collate the output of the anointing. Now, it's just like you have a drum full of petrol and you have a hole punched in it. It's a matter of time before you finish from this seminar and go back to the place. It's finished. <laughs> Planning is the cheapest way to avert wastage. So energy can be wasted, time can be wasted, unction can be wasted when there is no plan. So plan is a way of conserving energy. Somebody came to my office from Abuja sometimes, but, and he sat down there and he heard me talking with him, how is your family, how is your wife? He said, I could not imagine that somebody that is sitting over an organization of this magnitude can be so relaxed. That's what planning does. It relieves you of tension. Amen. To move money from one place to another, there are about five people who will sign. You, there is no method you can use to short circuit that. So it will go through all the processes. So when you come to me, I don't have to think. It has been thought through. Whatever anointing you have that will pass through all that line without they discovering that you are fraud, it will be dangerous. And the person who will reach my office when it concerns me is the auditor. is the chief internal auditor, not the accountant. So he can't confuse me. The auditor has now taken his own professionalism to the paper. We've checked and it's okay. I say, are you sure? Yeah, okay. On your authority, I sign. If anything goes wrong, you are gone. 
Otherwise, I would need to go to write to start writing I can exam. You know what I mean? Before I finish, I will have finished finishing everything. So, and when you now need electrical engineering expertise, you now go back again to school to go and learn electrical engineering. Before you finish, the house has caught fire. <laughs> I mean, so it is planning that empowers purpose for very gallant delivery. You need planning. So what is planning? And I think we need to do this now because people need to know what it is. In my view, planning is the design of a step-by-step -step approach to accomplishing a set goal. The design. So it's a design. It's a design of a step-by-step -step approach to accomplishing a set goal. It is the ordering of one's priority in a bid to accomplishing a given task. The ordering of your priority in a bid to accomplishing a given task. Number three, planning can be defined as a, it's a process of action in a quest to fulfill a dream. A process of action. That is, you, you, you sit down and then you you design a set of activities that will help you accomplish a given task. So it's a design, and so we have to sit down to do it. We have said time and again, no one succeeds by accident. It's well said by someone, he says, success is a matter of luck. Ask any failure. That's his position. Success is a matter of luck. You see that man is only lucky. We started business together at the same time. <laughs> Why are you not lucky? He has a sharper plan. He has a smarter plan. Shallow men think of luck, but great men think of cause and effect. Zig Ziglar said, just any dummy can succeed if he cares to know what it takes. Just any dummy can succeed if he cares to know what it takes. Please know that it takes sound planning. To make a success of your business endeavors, it takes sound planning. And now let's go back to what makes a great plan. If you want a great product, you must identify the raw materials, the best raw material for it. What is it that makes a great plan? Then let's go ahead and locate the great raw material for it. I want to believe no one reigns without the use of the brain. It is the use of the brain that establishes the reign of man. Every gain is a result of the use of the brain. It is the use of the senses that make a star, that makes a star. If planning is designing a logical and rational approach towards accomplishing a given task, then we can tell what the raw material is. It is thinking. What is it? Or help me call it reasoning. 
Reasoning is the principal raw material for sound planning. And to reason is to engage in the art of logical, rational, and analytical thinking. That is what the word reason means. <laughs> to reason means to engage in the art of logical, rational, and analytical thinking. So, every great planner must be a great thinker. Because the principal raw material required for planning is reasoning. That is strategic thinking. What do I call it? That's what reasoning is all about. Reasoning is strategic thinking. It is the art of logical, rational, and analytical thinking. We had projected the next 25 years of our ministry. And we can tell what the stages will be in five, five years' slot. And we could project the income and the management of such resources to match what will be required. We could plan what is a church of 2,000 will require as a staffing standard. So we have staffing standard for a church of 500, staffing standard for a church of 1,000, and that keeps your thing in perspective. It is after all of that to now put it together. And okay, so how much goes into staff overhead? Also, super said, no, it's against our management policy. So let's check whether we can review downwards the number of staff requirement. If it's not done, just wake up in the morning and discover that there is no way you can manage the staff overhead. Like many of you may be involved in now. That you start praying to pay staff when you are not charmed. Because if the work is not able to generate what we pay them, it doesn't make sense to engage them. I have never prayed for staff wages in my life. Planning has rescued me from that prayer. And if you pray to tomorrow and you don't pay them, you, you will lose respect. When you are praying, they say it's a lie. That prayer, that prayer is not correct. You must be praying to the devil because... Uh, Maybe you are struggling to pay your five employees today, but you have potential for 500 tomorrow. All you need to do is to build gradually from one to two as the operation and business enlarges, and from two to three, and you suddenly find yourself now 100, and now 150, and now 200. Instead of killing your tomorrow by poor planning today. So it is the use of the brain that enhances the quality of our planning. Life is practical, not mystical. Therefore, we need to give a practical approach in order to make the most of our adventure on earth. I believe a mystical approach will produce a miserable end. You know, India as a nation, I'm sorry if you are from India. India as a nation was sold out to mysticism. You know why they throw them out of Olympics? When they say on your marks, before you say go, he has arrived there. And they didn't see him on the line. They say, no, 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 we don't run like that here. <laughs> Amen. There are 500 million idols in uh, India. You know talisman? Those are the initial products of India. Before they became real, they were enslaved by mysticism. And so they lost relevance to the world. 
You know, in those days, people used to kill human beings to make money in Nigeria, isn't it? It's no longer selling. You kill anybody, you are just wasting your time. If you need money, you go straight to the market and then offer goods and services. Let's wake up. If you kill anybody, they will also kill you. <laughs> he that destroys by sword, he shall also fall by the sword. All those who kill people that time, where are they now? They are dead. Their generations after them are also dying. So every gain is traceable to the use of the brain. So the principal raw material is strategic thinking, which we call reasoning. And the engine room for planning is the brain. The engine room for planning is the brain. New York Times asked me a question in 2004. They said, what do you do with your time? And it wasn't part of the regular questions on their interview. I said, I read and I think. And everybody around me knows that that is my main line hobby. I read and I think. The only time I knew I needed a driver was when I would park by the road to put down my thoughts before they escape. Uh, uh, when the thoughts strike through my mind, I would just park the car, and take my pen and write it down, and then I nod my head before they would think that is madness. That's the only time I knew I needed a driver. When we sit in the car going from one place to another, you can find me very busy the next three hours, no word to anybody, uh, drawing things and, you know, checking the calculations and seeing how it works and all of that. That is the only way to work it. Anything you copy won't work in your circumstance. Because the various factors that brought out that module is not what exists in your place. So it has to be integrated. That has given you access to how it is done somewhere else. Now integrate into your own. There are many people in businesses who don't have any salary. They just eat everything as it comes. They call the fellow that works with them. Hello, young man. What do you have there? He said, 10,000. Bring me now. <laughs> Say, where are you going? Just bring me. You're asking me where I'm going. He said, sir, will you sign? No, my money. Sign what? Go. If you ask me that again, that's the last time. <laughs> so as you are taking, the boy is also taking, isn't it? Because there is no document. <laughs> How much do I have there? 20,000. Bring it. Yes, sir. And it's say 20,000, the boy to say, I take 5,000. So we'll be sharing it. <laughs> we are shareholders in this company. There is no plan. Nobody will check it. Every dedicated thinker will always imagine a great planner. And no one can think for you. You have to think for yourself. That's why students fail exams, because their teachers can't think for them in the exam hall. They teach you and leave you to think your way through. So every information you have gathered here from every workshop, from the plenary sessions, you now go and use it and enter the engine room and start analyzing and diagnosing and dissecting and integrating until you can find how to draw maximum value in addressing your present position if you must have a change of position. The model of this ministry is unique to her. It's not copied from anywhere. Where knowledge is fetched from everywhere, but there is originality about everything. The service schedule here is originally designed here, although it has been, you know, uh, customized, I mean, whatever they call it, franchise, and you find it in almost every church today. The same song you are singing, they sing it exactly the same way. And the, their program shall do is exactly the way you are doing it. Whether it now suits their own organization or not, it doesn't matter. So they will be crying and screaming and it won't work. They have gone to put their time of service for 7 a.m. And their members say, oh, we come, they are 7 a.m. call. 
because they haven't built enough capacity to make anybody wake up at 5 a.m. They just leave him, so himself and his wife are doing service. And then the usher says, let me find out whether they are still there. Because he can't sit down to think. He's using borrowed thoughts. Covenant University has its own unique program. How you feel is, is unimportant. This is the program of Covenant University. If you see handset in your hand, you know that, that you have graduated. Why? You are not earning a dime. You'll be tempted to steal, to run it. Two, you need concentration. You have been developed as responsible citizens, so we need to package you properly. That's our stand. You may not like it. That's your problem. Go somewhere else. There are other places where you can use gramophone, use anything. But here you can't. He said, ah, for stealing, expect, ah, you haven't seen anything. If you take the lead of a big biro, big biro, that is not your own, and they say, where is this thing? You say, you don't know, and they find it with you. That is BSC <laughs> premature. <laughs> BSC premature. Now, you see, you may not feel good, that's your problem. It is unique to us. That is our own identity. Somebody went to tell Mr. President that I said that if he has a son here and the son breaks the rule, there will be no recourse to his father to deal with him. We deal with him according to the books. So someone went to tell Mr. President and he said, he said, the man came here and told me this and I said to him, I would have been disappointed if Bishop didn't do that. The man thought he would get angry. You're wasting your time. We have sent children of governors out of here easy. That is, uh, your father can't even see anybody. It's not necessary. You have the book in your hand before you came here that if you do this, you'll be sent away. So it doesn't matter whether your father is PDP or NDPP. It doesn't matter. Send me away. Praise the Lord. So the best thing is to, you need to engage your own model to create your own future. And our students, our graduates in the last NYC come, we got a report from the NYC headquarters. They were the most behaved in the camp because they have lived under it for four years. So it is not trying to behave. It is part of their life. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Say with me, strategic thinking. Culminating in strategic planning. And the engine room for that is your brain. If you are not committed to mental work, I said in my note, you will end up doing many a work. If you are not committed to mental work, you will end up doing many a work. One of my favorite teachers, E.W. Kenyon of Blessed Memory, this is what he said. He said, make your brain work. It will sweat. He said, but make it work then it will improve, it will develop until you become the envy of all those around you. Make your brain work, it will sweat. So there is the sweating of the brain. Come and say sweating of the brain. It is brain works, brain work that makes things work. Everything that is working great begins with brain work. Say with me, brain work. It begins with brain work. It begins with brain work. It begins with brain work. I stumbled into somebody today on the TV. He's a presidential candidate. And then they asked him how he hopes to restore family values to Nigeria. He said he would do it in one hour. Ah! <laughs> so, the interviewer said, that sounded mystical. He said, just watch me. He says, I'm talking now. People are changing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, people are not real. People are not real.
Amen. Even Paul the Apostle can't try what you are talking about. That's what it takes to maximize your place in destiny. A committed to brain work, which is strategic thinking, which is the art of logical, rational, and analytical thinking, which culminates in enhancing the quality of your planning and of course it will affect the quality of your output so it's not cheap it's real work it is not cheap it is real work can I hear you say I will make my brain work even if it sweats I will keep it working because it is brain work that makes things work. It is brain work that makes things work. I had a young lady many years ago, and this lady read zoology in school. So when I asked her, and I said, What do you intend to do? He said, God told her that she will work in Ministry of Works. Ah. I said, as what? As a logical engineer? <laughs> now you see, and God did not only tell him that he work in ministry, she work in ministry of works, but told her that she will work in ministry of works in another state. Ah, ah. I said, God told you that. I said, yes. Ah. I said, go and check it. Go and check it. It's not, it's not real. You see, it's so important for us to know that God's ways are not lower. God's ways are higher. Can I hear your amen? So spirituality is not against reasoning. Spirituality is not what? When Jesus bent down and was right on the floor, he was reasoning the answer to the question of the Pharisees. We call this woman an adultery, and Moses said we should stone him. What do you say? He bent down and reasoning out the answer. These are deadly people. These are wicked people. What is the best way out of here? They have already carried stones, not to stone the woman, to stone Jesus. So he stood up. He ignored the question. Any one of you that has never committed anything, let him be the first to stone her. She bent down again to hear their response. If they say this, what will I say? If they say this, Amen. So spirituality is not against reasoning. As a matter of fact, it enhances the quality of your reasoning capacity because you now have a mind transplant. You carry the mind of Christ. You carry the mind of Christ. Let me show you a picture of analytical thinking before we close. You remember the story of the prodigal son in chapter 15 of Luke? After he came to his wit's end, he engaged in strategic thinking to have his dignity restored. He came to a point, he said, hey, oh boy, come to yourself. So he called himself to a meeting. That's what reasoning is all about. How many hired servants have my father that have enough to eat and to spare? And must I die here? We are nobody, we know my grave. I will arise and go. And say unto my father, I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have molested you and your integrity. I have wasted your substance on riotous living. But I would like you to take me as one of your servants. Now you see, he called himself to a meeting. He debated the issues on hand. Came out with a conclusion. And stood up to walk on the plan and you understand what it was the father with open arms welcomed him back into dignity that's what will happen to you after this meeting yeah.
So plan today and you will play tomorrow. And play with planning today, you will feel flat tomorrow. If you can think enough, what to have is enough. Every time Jesus proffered a solution, it was with what people had in their hands. If you can think enough, what to have is enough. What sustained the widow of Zarepa throughout the famine period was what she had in her home. What bade the widows, the prophet's widow, out of debt? What the oil she had at home. So doing the right thing with what you have, we get you out of where you are to where you should be. May I therefore conclude by saying, if you want things to really work, then get started at the beginning. Because the, the best place to begin is the beginning. Every great gain begins with brain works. Every great gain begins with brain works. So every information we gather from here and there is to enhance the quality of our thinking process. So we can come out with high quality decisions in making the most of our assignments. Without a plan, you will eat up everything you have. Every time you keep waiting for the next thing to happen, that's not good living. That's not good living. I told you sometimes that when we were coming into Canaan land from the old church, we had 245 million in our cans. How much? 245 million in our cans. When we were starting off Covenant University project, we had 500 million on grand. You are borrowing to buy official car? You're wasting your life. You don't need it. The car you're using before is not complaining. Your true image is your product, not your posture. Your true image is your product and not your posture. We are so bothered about what people think without checking out on what it takes. My prayer is that as we get back to engage in great planning, we are going to get great results. Yeah. When God began creation, you could see strategic planning in place. What was the first thing he called for? What did he call for? What did he call for? Because that is the baseline for everything living. Light has to be before plants can be, and plants have to be before animals can be, and plants must be in place before man can survive, because man will need the oxygen from the plants. And you could see strategic thinking, and the Lord, but the Bible said the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth and by understanding as he established the heavens. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 19. How manifold are thy works, O God. In wisdom has thou made them all. The earth is also full of thy riches. Psalm 104 verse 24. So creation is a product of God's strategic planning. So anything you are creating will require strategic planning as baseline. There is no shortcut. The first day came, the answer came. The second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day. And after he has done all that will be required for man to function, he now created man. Get back to Genesis chapter 1 and you see strategic planning at creation is so sequential. One after the other and one leading to the other. Before he brought plants in, he already created the firmament that will sustain the evaporation of water which will result into rain. 
He did everything one after the other. He wasn't thinking of water after creating fish. Or thinking of rain after the plants are already there. They were done one after the other. I see that same strategic planning anointing come upon your life tonight. Yeah. And I see you maximize that great potential that God has put in your life. Yeah. And you see his organizational structure in Exodus chapter 18. When by inspiration, Moses' mother-in-law said to him, I mean, uh, 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 father-in-law said to him, Jethro, he said, look, you will die if you continue like this. He had this, an organizational structure that will help secure your future. Eh? Set captains over tens, captains over fifties, captains over hundreds, and captains over thousands. And then you now see that it's only the case they cannot handle that we come to you. So you see the structure just came down like that. From the top to the thousands to the hundreds to the fifties and to the tens. So everybody is taken care of. Without you sitting from morning till night. So you need an organizational structure which is what planning will evolve into. That shows you the reporting lines and where it comes from, the authority lines and everything. And you can see that they go. That this is how it works. Don't you ever wait for it to become great. This is what will make it to ever become great. So the plan must start Many have great plans, but they are not committed to it. May you receive grace to be committed to the plans you have drawn. Amen. If you break the rules, nobody else will be interested in obeying it. If you break the rules, nobody else will be interested in obeying it. Because people only hear what you say, but they will end up doing what you do. If you're a breaker of the rules, don't expect men to buy it for a penny. I don't care what that job is. Maybe a little kiosk. Let it have a great business plan. And let there be high quality planning going into it. At the end of the day, you'll be right there. It's not enough to have a business. It's important to have one that is growing and has life in it. May you experience that in truth and in deed. Yeah. Rise to your feet, everybody. <laughs> Lift up your two hands and give him thanks and praise. Receive grace now for strategic planning. Grace to commit to brain works that things can keep working. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. May I say this to you, why you must do this now. Everywhere waste thrives, grace fails. If you subscribe to waste, you disconnect from grace. And you too know that if you have a relation that is a waster, you will not be interested in investing into whatever it does. So when we subscribe to waste as a lifestyle, we disconnect from grace from heaven. And the cheapest way to guide against waste is to have a plan to which you are truly committed. A plan 
to which you are truly committed. A plan to which you are truly committed. The Bible said, He that is lawful in his business is a brother to him that is a great waster. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 9. <laughs> so when you are a waster, you are of the same family with the sluggard. And if the sluggard man will end up a beggar, then the waster will also end up a beggar. Because in Proverbs 20, verse 4, the slugger shall not sow by reason of the cold, therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. The moment you cannot present an acceptable book to God, you cannot expect to begin to receive more grace from him. And I, come, I must tell you, God constantly comes in, and I think he checks us or not annually. He said, these three years I came seeking fruit of you, I found none. I give you one year more. I'm coming again next year. There's an annual account that we render back to God to determine what happens to us the next year. And I know many people are at the same spot today because their accounts are not acceptable. That is for those who have. There are those who don't have at all at all. There are those who don't have at all at all. No personal account, no business account. It's all just lumped together. Everybody just moving everywhere. You have a, a there is a budget to rent an office for two hundred thousand. He sees one for one point two, and he's still pricing it when he's not not that he has is possessed. You know this is one million excess of your idea, the plan. You are still pricing it because there is no commitment to the plan. Okay, actually it was 200 we wanted, but this is 1.2, so let's go now. No problem. Let's go. Okay, where is the 1 million coming from? No idea. And then the bank gives him overdraft. Overdraft is not overgift. You will pay tomorrow. And you pay with interest, you'll be afraid. And for what is not actually enhanced, some don't even need offices to run. They need to run around now. But they get an office and put a chair and then they are rolling on the chair. There's a way forward for you. Yeah. Let me tell you what I see. I see God giving you another supernatural start. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to cause the forces of waste around your life and around your business. Go ahead and speak to it. Cause all the forces of waste around your life and around your business. Cause all the forces of waste around your life and around your businesses. Cause all the forces of waste around your life. In Jesus' precious name. 